Hello everyone and welcome to another episode on the Reloaded server. We are still here in our base, still trying to work out the redstone for this, and it is still very inconsistently working. Last episode I worked out that it was these hoppers that were not quite working, and now I've done a bit more testing and it turns out it's not these hoppers. It's just a, con a problem with consistent, consistently not being consistent, I guess, is the way to do it. I sent a logged off overnight and have sent now down a new glass line and it is now going inconsistently. So yeah, I think this design isn't gonna quite work out. So we're gonna have to go with a new one. Now, last night after I finished recording, I think Yumi Vagdo, I'm not sure if that's their name, uh, came, on, came around to help me with a bit of redstone and after I logged off, they finished up this thing. So I should say thank you to Yumi for for designing this thing. Uh, we've got the co the composters here to keep down lag. But anyway, I think it's a... I'm not exactly sure how this thing works, to be honest. But my guess is that it's locking all the hoppers individually. It's locking all these hoppers. And then it's doing... It's essentially doing the same thing that does, but a little bit more complicated from what I can understand. So, just drop it there, which is detected by that which then goes into those things, I guess. So lots and lots of redstone, lots of repeaters and comparators, which we don't have a lot of. And of course, one of the building blocks I'm gonna use uh, is probably not iron, to be honest, because I don't have a lot of that. But I think, I think I've think i got the grasp, I've got the idea of how this works well enough to be able to uh, copy it across to there. So I think I'll just quickly do that and then we should be able to get on to uh, smelting up some glass and and getting our shop done. I did have a, I did go over to the shopping district recently and buy a couple of blocks, and I have a suspicion someone else will be doing a glass shop. So we do need to get it on, get this started very quickly. Well, some three or so hours later, I've got this going. It took me that long because I was trying to work out how to do this thing and, of course, do it in duplicate. And of course, and I did mess up the redstone a couple of times. So I actually haven't tested this thing. So I am not sure if it's going to work. So I probably should have tested it before actually going on. But let's actually, let's do the full test right now and see what we can come up with. So we're gonna need a whole lot of sand and a bit of coal. Uh, where did I put my coal? Is it there? Or is it here? No, it's not. There we go. Coal, 64. So that should divide into quite nicely into two each, I think. And we need a whole lot of sand. So let's go one, two, three, four. Let's put in as much as we can, uh, which is most of this stuff, and see what happens. I'm really, really hoping it works because otherwise I am in big trouble. So fuel in there, input into there. And it should start flowing into there, but let's just go behind the scenes and check out the furnaces here. And if we crouch down, is it not working? I'm not really sure. Interesting, 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 interesting. Did I miss something? So I've got the hopper there which is, ah, I see the problem. So that's filling up there, and that one's gonna be filling up with coal. So this is gonna be filling up with all the stuff there. So I haven't quite got the redstone going right. Uh, okay, so that's a bit of a learning curve. Let's uh, check, ah, I think I know what it is. I forgot to set that one going. All right, that's a bit of an issue. Let's reset and go again. Well, it took me about 10 minutes to figure out what was going on. It turns out I had one of these comparators in the wrong order. Let me see, I think it was that one. It was that one of these was the wrong way around. I forgot to put a piece of redstone right in. Where is it? Uh, I forgot to put the piece of redstone that's hidden in there. So that all turned out to be wrong on both sides. I've now tested this without coal and I'm pretty sure it's going to work. So here we go, moment of truth. Let's dump the coal back in and in a minute, or a few seconds actually, these things should all fire. Uh, like that, come on. And there we go, so that seems to have worked. And all of the furnaces are working, that is perfect. So we've got that working, so now all we have to do is let that go and we should soon have a lot of glass. 
And looking at that, that is simply pouring in. Of course, we've got 16 hoppers on both sides, so we've got up to 32, and it takes about the amount of time for the last hoppers to start pushing all the way through their stuff all the way through to here for the first lot to start coming back in. So we should get just about a constant flow in. It's been probably about a minute, and we've already had four stacks of glass. So I'm pretty happy with the way this super smelter is going. It is going to be really fast, and we're probably going to need to refuel it pretty quickly, if we're honest, to or refuel it, restock it every now and then or really quickly to get this thing continuing. So that's the first of our projects done today. We've got ourselves uh, at least a front face of our of our super smelter and, and all the technical bits going there. So now we need to figure out a design for our glass shop and then restock it. Now I'm probably just going to do non-tinted glass or non-stained glass for the time being, but until at least until I can get a heck of a lot more glass and dirt, uh, coal going through or possibly other fuel as well to make sure that I've got myself a steady supply of all of lots more glass so I can get this shop underway but yes for the time being it's just going to be normal glass now I've come around to the shopping district to start build work on my shop and I've picked up this area I had to do a little bit of terraforming to make sure it actually fit in probably not the best terraforming in the world but it sort of works so i've got a double slot here with two lots of 10 and i think i'm going to try and build a little mansion first but first i've been told that i've got quite a bit of sales at my shop so let's head over to my second shop or my first shop over here and have a look and i'm told i'm going to have to restock a fair bit of stuff so let's look first in the mud Oh yes, 16 stacks, so we're going to have to, that's uh, probably enough for the time being. We can leave that for a little while, but it could become a problem shortly. And this one, we've got another, what's that, another 20 diamonds, so we're completely out of packed mud. So we're going to have to get that wheat farm going ASAP. So probably something we'll do later on this episode. So I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do with the this one here, and I'm definitely going to need some, some coloured glass which thankfully I've got, there's a nice shop up here which sells dyes so let's find ourselves a crafting table which we don't have any in our inventory and get to work so I'm gonna try and time lapse this if I once I figured out the shop and you'll get to enjoy some hopefully nice music <laughs> Well, after that little time lapse, we've got ourselves one working glass shop. Now, it's actually been a couple of days because I made a little mistake, as you'll probably see in the next clip. So, yeah, I made a little bit of a mistake, and we've now got ourselves two full boxes of glass, and unfortunately, no one's bought since I put this thing in. So, at some point, we're planning to put in a couple more glass things. So, probably of the tinted glass, we'll have... I probably can't quite show it as I intended to, but we'll have the two blocks there, say, of white concrete powder, and two in a double chest on top of that, and so on for as many colours as we would like to stock. So that is coming soon, but not quite yet, since I don't have the resources to be able to make or buy that amount of dyes yet. Now, over on this side of our shop, we still got our mud shop, which I think is still slowly producing a little bit of diamonds for us. Unfortunately, no one's bought since I last 
recorded. So a little bit disappointing there, but hopefully people will buy some more, especially with the glass as well, because I think that should be a good seller, hopefully. Now let's head over back to the base. Now I had been hoping to showcase a little bit of what I had been doing in the base for, a little, for the next few clips, but unfortunately, as I said, the voice, the voice recording software I use didn't quite work out. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to show you all the things that I've got done instead of how I got to it. So what I did was mark out my little area for a for a wheat farm, which you can see is slowly going there. There's the there's the one minecart going around we're only really allowed a couple of minecarts to go around because other too many of them will cause too much lag now i also got myself a zombie villager and cured it and dumped it in here unfortunately though it does seem like the mechanics of villagers are a little bit different between the java and bedrock versions of the game with bedrock i can put in the villager and then get rid of the composter and the guy will farm quite happily but unfortunately that's not quite the case with this one. It seems that if I allow him access to the composter, he's going to start dumping seeds in there, which is not quite what I want. I want him to use all his seeds only for this and let the rest go across into the into the minecart. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of research, which I'm probably going to do off camera and work out how I'm going to do this otherwise. So... Yes, let's exit this wheat farm for now and see what else we can do. A little bit more time has passed and I haven't really done much, but I have accidentally, or probably not accidentally, but I have gotten rid of my villager in here. He'd sort of escaped and I couldn't be bothered trying to get him back in. So what we've got here is just a manual wheat farm for the time being, and I'm going to see if I can buy a couple of villagers off people to try and get this farm working. I'm still not entirely sure how to get it, so it's going to be going at peak efficiency. And I'm not sure if the one minecart under here is going to be going at the way it needed to. I might need to do a little bit more work around this to get the minecart to work efficiently at with just one. So that might mean reducing the size of the farm or uh, putting in a different kind of system for collection. So perhaps a system where the villager throws the wheat to another villager that might work as well so a little cu a couple of ideas that i need doing so let me just check and nothing so good that guy has finished emptying so it is slowly working i guess but it is definitely not a it's definitely not a fully automatic farm like i would have hoped for so a bit more work to be done on this one so again mostly off camera we shall get this done here I'm doing a little bit of experimentation to see if this was actually going to work a little bit better. I've got a single villager in a pod that is about the right size for what I'm going to be trying for. As you can see, this is the size of the farm that we've got in the server itself. So I've split it into four roughly equal segments and it seems that if I can actually get myself back in the villager is doing a little bit better but I'm not sure if this central villager is actually going to help me at all so I'm going to get rid of at least block him off for the time being and in fact I might could just kill him off not sure if that will do anything to the not sure if that's going to do anything to the farmer villager but if we do that that should hopefully uh, if we can just get the dirt in there we go, in there we go. Hopefully this guy is gonna farm a little bit more efficiently. Now one of the things I found out as well is that, uh, is that, what was I gonna say? Is that the farmer I had actually had some wheat in his inventory from when I was actually uh, producing all the, when I was harvesting and then he, some wheat went into his inventory, which meant that he was picking up wheat, so yeah, that was a bit of an issue. So hopefully, if I can figure out the peak efficiency for these villagers, I can have a few more pods going around in the in the actual one and have the villagers working at peak efficiency. So I'm probably going to need four, and we have a cap of 12, I think, in a area before it becomes known as a villager farm, and not as villager farm, before it becomes known as a what is the term? I always forget these things, and I probably should have figured it out it, before it becomes known as a trading hall. So we can only have 12, so that will limit us somewhat, but I think 
we can manage 12 or we can manage four without it being too much of an issue and hopefully the minecart should be able to keep up. So I'm going to finish up here and see. I have a feeling that I may have built this thing just a tad too big because it is going to require four different villagers or I redesign the entire thing which I'm not particularly keen to do. So four villages it'll have to be or at, or at least one and possibly four two or three or four yeah not really sure so if i divide it into four which is not going to be even unfortunately because this is an 18 by 18 area so if i divide into four the villagers should be able to cope reasonably easily although i think i think they're able to detect blocks up to nine away so ideally if they're standing here they should be able to detect up to there but they can also go up to there but if, say, if they're standing in this corner, they can only detect you just a bit beyond where the trapdoor is. So, ideally, yeah, four, a four-segment area would be ideal, I think. So, somehow I'm going to need to wrangle four different villagers into here, uh, treat them all with, with, get them all into a full set of wheat. So that means I'm going to need 36 stacks of seeds, which hopefully won't take too long. And then I can get myself a hopefully fully functional wheat farm. So lots and lots of villagers need to go in. But that's going to bring an end to today's episode. I'm probably going to do the villagers mostly off camera because it was quite a bit of work just to get the one in. And I don't think you'd particularly be keen to see the same thing about four times. So we'll do that off camera. But we're going to end today's episode right there. And hopefully you'll join me for the next episode because I've got something very, very special planned for a very special day. We'll see you. Hopefully you'll join me then. Till then, see you later. Bye.